a populist candidate whose pro-Russian messaging helps win an election, while liberal pro-European candidates lose out. Dubious political players spreading Kremlin propaganda with impunity and Russian agents handing out bribes. A real-life political thriller is being played out in Slovakia. The country on the edge of the EU has elected a new parliament after a turbulent and polarizing campaign in which pro-Russian propaganda played a major role. What does it mean for the rest of Europe and for elections in other EU countries? And why does it seem so easy for Russia to undermine Europe's confidence in democracy? This is Vranov nad Toplu, a small town in eastern Slovakia. It's just an hour's drive from the border with Ukraine, where Russia is waging its war. Nowhere has the Slovakian election been fought more fiercely than in provinces like this. Today, the extreme right Republika party is holding a rally. They hand out chocolate to the public along with lots of anti-Western propaganda. Milan Mazurek, a senior party lawmaker, rails against the European Union, NATO and the Americans. Pensioners can't afford to heat their apartments. Young families are fleeing abroad because they can't make a living here. And we're feeding American soldiers. It is a message that hits home. Many here are disappointed with politicians in Bratislava and Brussels. They complain about rising food and energy prices, and they question Western support for Ukraine. Both sides are to blame for the war. That's what I think. Both sides. But the media only tells us one part. You only publish what suits you. This war will end eventually. I'm not afraid of Russia. Opinions like these are no surprise to Mikhaila Ruzhichkova. She runs the Info Security project, which aims to detect and expose Russian disinformation in Slovakia. Our disinformation space started to form in like 2014 because of the Crimea crisis, you know, the annexation of Crimea. And nowadays it is really huge. It is big and complex. There are many actors. Uh, it is consisted of, uh, you know, the alternative media, which are just the websites that are spreading false narratives, disinformation, pro-Russian propaganda mainly. Mikhaila Ruzhichkova says there are thousands of Facebook pages spreading pro-Russian narratives. There are also nearly 300 websites that pose as online news outlets. She shows us the page of Hlavne Sprave a popular conservative portal that pretends to publish news. Last year, Hlavne Sprave made headlines. One of its authors was secretly filmed talking to a Russian intelligence officer. The video shows him accepting a bribe in return for allegedly spreading Russian propaganda. The man was sentenced to a fine and probation, and the website was blocked, but only temporarily. We want to talk to those responsible, so we go to the address listed for the publisher. But there is nobody there. Neighbors say it's long been abandoned. No one responds to our inquiries, and the phone number given on the site isn't working. The number you have dialed does not exist. Instead, we visit Jennik N, the real newspaper that published the video of the bribe. Its editor-in-chief, Matush Kostolny, says the fact that the affair had no real consequences shows how vulnerable Slovakia is to outside interference. It shows that even the courts in Slovakia don't understand the situation, that there is a, there is a special war going on in Slovakia and Russians are fighting that war. For me and for the country, Russia is the enemy. And, and they are not able to understand that this is very serious. Pro-Russian propaganda has also been spread by prominent politicians. While campaigning, they've regularly repeated slogans usually heard from the Kremlin. Among them is Robert Fico. The leader of the left-wing nationalist party Smer spoke out against arms deliveries to Ukraine and against further sanctions on Russia. At a press conference shortly before the election, we ask him this. 
Why are you promoting Russian propaganda? Do you think it makes you popular? Why don't you give us the right to have our own opinion about the war in Ukraine? We are not obliged to repeat the rhetoric of the United States of America or Western Europe. Fico did well with this message during the campaign, especially in towns and villages away from the capital, where the economic consequences of the war in Ukraine are particularly noticeable. The Ukrainians have money and they have no problem buying anything. Slovaks have trouble buying honey because they can't afford it. The Ukrainians come and collect a lot of money. Natalia Hromoshak often hears false claims and prejudice in Slovakia. The Ukrainian came here fleeing the war. We meet her in a market in the city of Košice. The country has taken in more than 100,000 Ukrainians, but many here don't believe that Ukraine is the victim. The propaganda certainly works. They don't know much about Ukraine, but that propaganda works. They believe Russia is the older brother. Mikhaila Ruzhitskova and the InfoSecurity platform are trying to work out why pro-Russian disinformation is taking hold in Slovakia. There is the common history uh, with the Russian Federation, of course, with the Soviet Union, and uh, the Kremlin is pushing this narrative even today that uh, Russia is uh, our Slavic brother. And it's really working because people have this memory of the uh, common history uh, with the Soviet Union. They are looking at it at uh, some kind of golden era. for. This is especially true for older Slovaks who look back fondly on those times and feel disillusioned about life in the European Union. Meanwhile, Moscow's embassy in Bratislava is one of the EU's most active when it comes to spreading anti-Western messaging. So far, there is no evidence of direct Russian interference in Slovakian elections. But many liberal politicians are being targeted by disinformation. This is the headquarters of Progressive Slovakia, a liberal pro-European party. Its candidate has faced especially tough campaign attacks, including this deep fake video which made him appear to announce a massive rise in beer prices. A drastic increase in beer prices will be one of the first things a government led by us will implement. It was a clumsy fake, but Mihal Šimečka of Progressive Slovakia takes the issue seriously. What, hasn't been hey, what would you do to counter this campaign? What, what we do, well, we try to obviously refute that which is an obvious lie, and an obvious slur against our party. But uh, most importantly, we're trying to run a positive campaign. From the very start, we're trying to talk about the kind of positive vision for the country, uh, than we, that we envisage in our manifesto. When election day finally arrives, voters wait in long lines to cast their ballots. Many in Bratislava seem to be worried about the direction in which their country is heading. We know that there are various hybrid operations going on in Slovakia thanks to foreign influences. Even though we have the freedom to vote, it's clear we are also quite influenced by these manipulations. The last few years have shown that democracy isn't as secure as we thought. Election night. At party headquarters, there is an anxious wait for results. Mikhail Šimečka's liberals are a young party, but in the final campaign sprint they managed to position themselves as favorites, including with clear commitments to Ukraine. Would you say that your victory would be a blow to Putin? Well, first of all, who needs to deal a blow to Putin is Ukraine and his army, and of course uh, the supporters of Ukraine, including Slovakia, and that's regardless of how this election plays out. Once polls close, the first projections are a release. The mood here is good. The Liberals are in fact a hat. But Martin Hoysik, who represents the party in the European Parliament, remains cautious. This is tight. It looks positive, but it's uh, still on the exit poll. So we'll have to see the final results. But it's also very humbling, I have to say, after months and months of work and campaign which was sadly also quite 
I don't want to say dominated, but uh, quite polluted by lots of misinformation and uh, essentially a hybrid war by third parties. Meanwhile, at Smear party headquarters, populist candidate Robert Fitzo isn't speaking to the media. The projections aren't what he hoped for. But as the night goes on, things take a turn. As more votes are counted, it becomes clear that Fitzo's strategy will win him the election. The next day, he appears triumphant before the press. He announces what lies ahead, including talks on forming a government. When asked about the war in Ukraine, Fito says he wants peace talks and that Slovaks have bigger problems than Ukraine. Your critics could assume that uh, your victory is a win for Vladimir Putin. No one is directing us from the outside. We don't have a donor list, as is the case with other parties. No one's coming here to tell us what we should or shouldn't do. So please respect us for disagreeing on some things. After all, that's the essence of democracy. Fito's victory could have far-reaching consequences, including for Ukraine and EU solidarity. At a conference in Bratislava, we asked disinformation expert Mikaela Ruzicova about upcoming elections in Poland and Bulgaria and next year's European elections. Will they see similar disinformation campaigns? During the discussions with our colleagues, uh, we really see some similar trends. Uh, the other countries are also struggling with uh, gaining public uh, trust in the institutions, as uh, some uh, actors like uh, also politicians, but uh, the alternative media and social uh, media actors as well, are uh, continuously undermining this trust. The political situation in Slovakia shows the consequences of a long-term disinformation campaign. Experts say Russian efforts to manipulate democracies will continue and even increase. They'll keep affecting European nations unless the West takes action.